Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism or an overactive thyroid. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about what hyperthyroidism is, and then we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms and why they occur. Let's first talk about what the thyroid gland is. The thyroid gland is a gland that is located in your neck, in the front of your neck. And this gland is responsible for making thyroid hormones. One of those is thyroxine or T4, and the other one is triiodothyronine or T3. Now, these thyroid hormones are involved in three important functions. One is metabolism, another one is movement, and another one is mentation. And the way to remember what the thyroid hormones do is by remembering the three Ms. One M for metabolism, another M for movement, and another M for mentation. So these three categories of functions are mediated by thyroid hormones. So if there is too much or too little thyroid hormone, we're going to see problems in each of these three domains. Now, in the case of hyperthyroidism, we're going to see higher levels of these thyroid hormones. And so we're going to see increased activation within each of these three domains of functioning. So this is going to help us better understand why signs and symptoms occur. Now let's actually talk about the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. One of the first symptoms that's going to be noted with hyperthyroidism is heat sensitivity or heat hypersensitivity. This is actually one of the most common symptoms and it is a sensation of feeling too warm or hot. So it's an inability to tolerate heat. So this is going to be one of the symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Another one is increased appetite. So increased appetite is ultimately due to increased metabolism. As we mentioned before, metabolism is one of the three M's that is mediated by thyroid hormones. So higher thyroid hormones is going to lead to increased metabolism. So an increased appetite is going to be a result of that. We can also see bowel habit changes. So bowel habit changes, more specifically, increased frequency and decreased consistency of stools. So whatever the baseline level of bowel movements was for an individual, what they find is that if they have hyperthyroidism, they're going to have increased frequency of bowel movements. So you can imagine that the increased levels of thyroid hormones are going to increase the movement of the gastrointestinal system. So you can remember it by thinking like that. So we're going to see increased frequency of bowel movements, but oftentimes we're also going to see decreased consistency of stool, which is going to translate into diarrhea. So oftentimes patients with hyperthyroidism are going to experience diarrhea as well. And then along with all of this, we can see weight loss in hyperthyroidism. And again, the weight loss is going to be mild to moderate, and it's due to that increased metabolism. So paradoxically, even with increased appetite, the patient may feel very hungry, they may be eating a lot, they still have weight loss because they have increased metabolism. So that increased metabolism from hyperthyroidism is going to cause not only increased appetite, but it's also going to cause a mild to moderate weight loss, and in some cases may be a severe weight loss. Now, some other signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism include anxiety. Anxiety may be due to increased mentation. So this can lead to anxiety. Patients can often feel anxious. So feeling anxious, feeling nervous is often common with hyperthyroidism. Along with the anxiety, we can see tremulousness. So tremulousness is a tremor or increased movement. So again, we talked about those increased levels of thyroid hormone mediating increased movement. So we're going to see increased movement with hyperthyroidism. We're going to see tremulousness. And more specifically, patients will often feel shaky and they can often have hand tremors. So their hands can be shaky. And this tremulousness can also be related to anxiety. So not only do they feel shaky, but they may feel anxious and that can also contribute to that shakiness as well. Patients with hyperthyroidism can also experience sweating and oftentimes this is excessive sweating. Insomnia is also another symptom of hyperthyroidism. So insomnia meaning that they either have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. So this can translate into difficulty falling asleep, waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to go back to sleep, or early morning awakenings. So this can be a sign of hyperthyroidism as well. And oftentimes, because of this, they can feel fatigued. So because of their insomnia, patients with hyperthyroidism often feel fatigued. Some other signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism include muscle weakness. So muscle weakness may occur in hyperthyroidism. We can also see menstrual irregularities occurring. So because there is interplay between some of the thyroid regulating hormones and some of the gonadotropin releasing hormones, this can affect the menstrual cycle. So oftentimes what can be noted is that hyperthyroidism can lead to decreased frequency of menstrual cycles. So there can be hypomenorrhea, which is decreased frequency of menstrual cycles, 
or complete cessation of menstrual cycles, which would be amenorrhea. So either of these can occur. Depression can also occur in these patients. Depression that occurs in hyperthyroidism is more likely to occur in older patients who have hyperthyroidism. And then dementia or dementia-like symptoms can also occur in hyperthyroidism. And this, again, most often occurs in older patients. So older patients with hyperthyroidism can have a couple of extra symptoms that they may experience. Depression and dementia are two of them. Now, some important physical signs of hyperthyroidism include the following. Tachycardia. So tachycardia is increased heart rate. So it's a high heart rate, and tachycardia more specifically means a heart rate over 100 beats per minute. Because of this increased heart rate, there may be arrhythmias. So there may be palpitations. The patient may feel that their heart skips or has an altered beat. And this ultimately can lead to atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation can be ultimately a result of hyperthyroidism. We're going to talk a bit more about this when we talk about thyroid storm later on in this lesson. Now, brisk reflexes are another physical sign that can be found in hyperthyroidism patients. Hypertension is also another sign that can be found in hyperthyroidism patients. More specifically, there's going to be what we call a widened pulse pressure. Pulse pressure is the difference between the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. So the systolic is the top number, the diastolic is the bottom number. So what we find in hyperthyroidism is that there is a widened pulse pressure. So what happens is the systolic pressure increases, but the diastolic pressure really doesn't change. So that will cause a widened pulse pressure. A widened pulse pressure is important to note because hyperthyroidism is one of the causes of a widened pulse pressure. And then another sign that can be found in hyperthyroidism is warm and moist skin. So it's not going to be that dry skin that we see in hypothyroidism. It's going to be warm and moist. We can also see an enlarged thyroid gland in some patients with hyperthyroidism. So this is a goiter. This may be seen in Graves' disease more specifically. Syncope can also occur in hyperthyroidism. So syncope is fainting. This may be related to atrial fibrillation or an arrhythmia that may occur from the increased heart rate that is being caused by hyperthyroidism. Some eye findings can also be found in some patients with hyperthyroidism. These are again only going to be found in Graves' disease. And these eye findings more specifically in Graves' disease are called Graves' ophthalmopathy. So this can be something that can be noted even before there is actually an issue with thyroid functioning. There may be changes with the eyes. And some of these eye findings include the following. Eyelid retraction. So because the eyes become so enlarged and bulge out, the eyelids can essentially look like they're being retracted in. They look like they're being pulled in. So that's eyelid retraction. Exophthalmos is bulging eyeballs. So the eyes look like they're essentially bulging out, and that's because they actually are. Orbital pain can also be another finding in patients who have Graves' ophthalmopathy. So there is pain in or behind the eyes, and then there can be tearing in these patients as well, so they can have excessive tearing. Now, hyperthyroidism can also cause some vitamin deficiencies, and one of them is thiamine deficiency. So some vitamins can become consumed very quickly if there's increased levels of metabolism, and one of them is thiamine, or vitamin B1. What can be noted is that there may initially be some vague signs and symptoms. These include fatigue, weight loss, and abdominal discomfort. Now, if the thymine deficiency is prolonged or long-lasting, it can lead to certain medical conditions, and one of them is known as beriberi, and the other one is Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. So more likely, it's going to be beriberi that's going to be a manifestation of hyperthyroidism. Oftentimes, Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome is going to be found more often in patients who have issues with alcohol abuse. Now, if the thyroid hormone levels are so high, they become extremely high, this can lead to something called thyroid storm. So thyroid storm is a particular medical emergency that can occur in patients who have hyperthyroidism, especially if they're untreated and those thyroid hormones are at very high or extremely high levels. So in thyroid storm, we can see some specific findings that are important to recognize. One of them is altered mental status. So altered mental status, you can think of confusion or altered sensorium. The patient doesn't know who they are and doesn't know where they are. We can also see fever. So fever can occur in patients who are experiencing a thyroid storm. Muscle wasting and severe weakness is something that also can occur in thyroid storm. And then we can see mood swings. So mood swings can also occur in thyroid storm. These are very important to recognize. Some other signs and symptoms of thyroid storm include nausea and vomiting, diarrhea. So we did mention before that there is oftentimes diarrhea in patients who have hyperthyroidism, but in thyroid storm, we can see this 
even more significant. And we talked about a high heart rate being something that can be found in patients with hyperthyroidism that can ultimately lead to arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. Now, if this is prolonged or very severe, this can lead to cardiogenic shock. And this cardiogenic shock is because there is essentially tachycardia-induced heart failure. And this can lead to issues with the heart pumping blood to the organs in the rest of the body. So this can lead to cardiogenic shock. And ultimately, if the thyroid storm is not treated, it can lead to a coma. So it can be very devastating for patients who are experiencing thyroid storm for long periods of time. So if you want to learn more about other thyroid conditions, please check out my endocrinology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.